morning, televiewers, and happy week starts from us at My Media Prime Television. You are on to your favorite bilingual program, The Brief, which is dedicated to the review of striking headlines in the paper. So, on today's edition of the program, uh, we are interested, or the newspapers are interested, in the graduation ceremony of the sixth batch of ICT University Cameroon, which took place on Saturday in the nation's uh, political capital, Yaoundé. We shall equally talk about Cameroon that has secured another IMF loan, this time around for economic growth. Uh, we are told 375 billion francs CFA is the amount that uh, government has secured uh, as IMF loan for economic growth. Thank you for joining. Let's go find out what the French newspapers have for us this morning with Etape Canten. Bonjour, Etape. Bonjour, La Chakinsili. Bonjour à nos millions de testateurs qui nous regardent en ce moment durant cette émission de la grande revue de presse de débrief de chaque matin, édition de ce lundi, premier jour de la semaine. Alors, c'est le 2 août 2021. Mesdames et Messieurs, bienvenue et installez-vous confortablement. Nous commençons très rapidement avec le quotidien La République, qui, après une enquête menée sur l'amélioration, n'est-ce pas, de l'évolution ou bien de, du réseau national de la télécommunication, consacre à sa grande une ce matin le mine postel en cimetière des projets. Selon le journal de Timothée et Somba Abena, le projet de réseau national des télécommunications abrégé RNTU et la construction du et la construction du pont d'atterrissement Africa Coste du Europe abrégé ACE euh, connaissent une déperdition exceptionnelle des sources très proches du dossier évoque des obstacles tutélaires volontairement dressés en représailles au non versement rétro commission exigée à des prestataires, rapporte le journal, dans un contexte où le magistère de le magistère Minette Lili Bonquin est controversé dans les, les querelles de chiffonnier, visiblement égaré au mime postel poursuivant avec euh, le quotidien éconnu, ce qui titre à sa grande une ce matin, « Investissement public, la faible maturité des projets plombe l'exécution », le journal de euh, Foutan Arsène Thierry nous fait savoir ce matin que le niveau de maturité de 12 projets d'envergure a été examiné par euh, le comité technique interministériel d'experts chargé de l'examen des dossiers de maturité des projets d'investissement public soumis par les maîtres d'ouvrage, c'était vendredi dernier au ministère de l'économie comme problème souligné à l'exécution des projets d'investissement public au Cameroun. L'on déplore le manque de financement, les problèmes d'indemnisation et les études d'impact environnemental, entre autres. En tout cas, pour plus de détails, je vous propose d'aller parcourir les colonnes des pages 5 et 6 de ce journal présent en kiosque ce matin. Terminons avec euh, notre exercice avec le bi hebdomadaire La Voix du Centre qui s'intéresse à la succession aux commandes dans la municipalité à l'ouest, commune de Banganté, après Niat, Senia. C'est d'ailleurs euh, le grand titre que le journal confie à sa grande une. D'après nos confrères, Eric Emignat a été installé le 31 juillet dernier à la tête de l'exécutif communal de Banganté avec quatre autres adjoints sous le regard attentif de son père Marcel Niat Divindi, président du Sénat et ancien maire de cette même commune. Une information à retrouver dans son intégralité à la page 4 de cette parution présente en kiosque ce matin. Et puis, achevons avec le quotidien à capitaux gouvernemental Cameroun Tribune qui s'intéresse au foot africain et titre préparation de la canne. La pression monte dans les colonnes de la page 4 de ce numéro. En kiosque, nos confrères expliquent que le Premier ministre, chef du gouvernement, Joseph Djangouté, a évalué la situation des villes hôtes de l'événement et commande qu'elles aient le visage plus réduisant possible, comme Garoua, où le ministre des Sports y a effectué une visite de travail. C'était au cours de la deuxième réunion préparatoire en l'espace de trois jours, vendredi dernier. Fin et stop pour la lecture des unes en langue française. 
pour cette grande revue de presse. Place actuellement à la découverte de cet tabloïd en langue de Shakespeare avec toi, la Shakin Sili. Thank you, Etape Kanté. Let's kick start with the lone English daily, the Guardian Post newspaper, which is of course interested in the 375 billion francs CFA IMF loan that the government of Cameroon has secured. According to the paper, government gets a 375 billion francs CFA IMF loan to boost economic growth. You can get more details about the loan only in this edition of the Guardian Post newspaper at graduation ceremony in Yaoundé of Basanjo Hills Quality Training at ICD University uh, Cameroon. According to the paper, uh, the ICD University uh, which graduated its uh, sixth batch of uh, 300 students over the weekend in Yaoundé. The projects in the near future, the information and communication technology ICD University Cameroon will feature amongst Africa's uh, top uh, 10 universities. Uh, universities in uh, the continent. Let's stay with the Guardian Post newspaper to talk about this acquisition levied against uh, the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications of Cameroon uh, by a telecommunication uh, company in the country. We are told that uh, Nextel accuses uh, P&T Minister of Lies telling uh, victimization. Stay with the Guardian Post newspaper this time around. Talk about a 10 billion francs FA controversy in COVID-19 fund. Expenditure report vindicates uh, Finance Minister Louis Paul Mutaze on to the Horizon newspaper to talk about uh, uh, despite uh, 2019 fire uh, accident at Sonara. We are told by the Horizon newspaper that uh, management reassures uh, continued fuel uh, supply in uh, the uh, country and uh, the paper is also interested in the 375 billion francs uh, loan to Cameroon despite uh, protest by some uh, women or uh, women leaders in the country. It should be recalled that uh, Edith Kawala, who is the president of uh, the CPP party, recently uh, mobilized some women leaders in the country to protest against uh, the loans that were currently being granted to the government of Cameroon. And this time around, the uh, IMF has snubbed uh, Kawala to approve another loan to the government of Cameroon, this time around for uh, the boosting of economic uh, growth. And at a graduation ceremony in Yawunde, Obasanjo, who is the former uh, president of Nigeria, still show at uh, the said graduation uh, ceremony. We are told Obasanjo urged uh, students or graduates to uh, be ambassador of uh, development in their various uh, communities. On to Cameroon Insider. Cameroon Insider this morning is interested in uh, the cement uh, price uh, in the country. The paper writes that uh, no increase in prices products or producers and uh, distributors took this uh, commitment following several meetings uh, with officials of uh, the Ministry of Trade and our uh, Ministry of Trade in Yaoundé, uh, Cameroon uh, lately. Let's also talk about uh, the IMF funding. Cameroon secures another 375 billion francs, uh, this time around meant for uh, boosting economic uh, growth. The money has been obtained within the extended credit facility and will be uh, directed towards uh, economic recovery project as I uh, earlier mentioned. Let's take you to Canada this time around to talk about uh, a Cameroonian businesswoman who has been appointed as a senator in uh, Canada. A 60-year-old businesswoman, Amina Gerber, who hails from Batier in the west region of Cameroon, was on July 29 appointed by Canada's uh, Governor General as uh, independent senator in uh, the country's 105-seat uh, federal uh, senator. It. We stay with Cameroon Insider to talk about the recruitment into the basic uh, education. 3,000 more teachers recruited at a press conference in Yaoundé held last Friday. The uh, Minister of Basic Education, Professor Laurent Serge Etundingwa, described the process as free and transparent. Another process, according to the Minister, uh, to recruit three more, uh, 3,000 more teachers will be launched by the end of August uh, this year. The minister uh, announced uh, during the press conference. ICD University of Basanjo tells graduates to make uh, use of skills acquired the sixth batch of graduates of uh, the Information and Communication Technology University, ICT, were urged to be uh, entrepreneurial so as to help develop their various uh, communities. We end uh, this morning with uh, Cameroon Insider. Of course, uh, we've come to the end of... Uh,
The first part of the program this morning with Cameroon Insider, we are with our guest uh, this time around. He's a human rights uh, defender, Amadou Tante, who is, uh, of course, is a human rights defender. Like I earlier mentioned, he's been here uh, with us and he's always here. Amadou, welcome once again and uh, happy to have you. Good morning once more. Thank you very much for giving me this privilege today. You just came in from Yaoundé. Uh, yes, we just I just left Yaoundé yesterday after the uh, the three days uh, national women convention that was held at the Yaoundé conference center. Okay, so what are some of the resolutions that uh, the over one thousand women who converged on Yaoundé from different walks of life and uh, different regions of the country to crusade for peace? What were the resolutions that you guys arrived at uh, during the meeting? Okay, let me start here by thanking uh, the 38 women-led organization that uh, initiated this project and uh, the Friedrich Ebert Shifting Foundation, which, which who is in case the, the main sponsor of the program, uh, particularly to Madame Nina Neza, which who is a, the resident representative of uh, the Friedrich Ebert Shifting Foundation and the uh, entire collaborators of uh, this, uh, the Friedrich Ebert Shifting Foundation Central Africa for making this uh, National Women Convention a reality. This National Convention, Women Convention, in fact, I was very disappointed when I learned some of the things that Cameroonians were writing on uh, social media and all over the rest. As soon as many of us were not like uh, aware of what was really happening in Yaoundé, they thought some of them thought maybe thought that uh, they either they are ignorant or some of them are prevented that they, they, they are not interested in peace in Cameroon because the ceremony was not what some of the people are thinking. The place we went, the, the people went there not to the women went there not to dialogue. The women went there for 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 to sit down and share ideas on, and see possible ways of you know, recommendation of recommendation being out. Strong recommendations, both to, be, to different uh, stakeholders who are directly involved in this conflict, and among the recommendations that were proposed by this, the women to the different stakeholders uh, involved in the, the current conflict, be it in the northwest, southwest, and the far north region. The first proposition that came out was uh, on ceasefire. They called for an end, an immediate and permanent end of hostility, so as to give meaning to the African Union. Uh, uh, African Union campaign against to to silence the challenge going for a peaceful Africa and to end human rights violation and all the humanitarian crisis we have been going through. Secondly, these women talk of a uh, uh, dialogue. They should talk of a continuous dialogue. They say that the dialogue is really necessary. And for that, this dialogue to be possible, we need to touch the core the core areas which are directly involved, that would be like, uh, we have to talk on, on peace, solidarity, and any other thing that will help us come out of the crisis. Tell you, there were these women, there were the five points in, in total. So the third point, the women, is going to talk about uh, the fact that women, or uh, women leaders, they should make sure that women uh, women mediators or women negotiators should always be at the dialogue table or to your, be on the message, table let to let make sure that we come out of this crisis. To your message, you guys, you were directing the message to who? Are you, were you not talking in the air in Yaoundé? We were not talking in the air. This woman, remember I said more than 1,000 women from all walks of life. These women gathered in Yaoundé to like, uh, but the pass the message. Guns, that's the the recommendation. The guns, they are back there in the northwest. It is true. The, the guns they, are smoking. They the military, said it, was, it is for all the different stakeholders. It's not directed to particular persons. All the different stakeholders that are in one way or, or the other involved in the conflict, current conflict that is going on in Cameroon. Was Kawala there? Uh, oh, the, 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 no, 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 that was Kawala. The old Cameroonian. We have political people from political parties. We have a lawyer, magistrate. We have uh, uh, members of parliament. We have Bayam Selam. We have uh, women, domestic workers, and all. And all, the, all Cameroonian women were represented on, at all level. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, let's let's uh, continue with uh, this uh, other newspaper. In full newspaper this morning, major headlines uh, this morning uh, writes that uh, IMF snobs uh, Kawala and Co grants another loan to the government of Cameroon. Uh, what is your take on this loan that is often being you know, mismanaged by the government and IMF keeps giving more loans to the government of Cameroon and despite the, the calls by some of these women uh, groups or leaders that the money is not being used judiciously or managed for the projects that uh, the money were meant for. Yeah, thank you for what I was wondering for the opportunity. I, I think it's uh, normal in Cameroon that uh, the issue of uh, bad governance and non-accountability is re is the reality. That's just what is happening on a daily basis in, in different uh, organizations or different actors. That would, those different people those who are involved directly in managing these funds. When we last time when we had uh, uh, Madame Kawala and the other members of uh, her coalition and other other women leaders came together and like was like petitioning the IMF. For to like cease from giving loans to Cameroon government because of the because of uh, maybe because of the poor management of these four funds or because of the crisis which is I'm imagining uh, the suspension of uh, an, of Cameroon from uh, from loans is another instrument and that now is ten, ten billion ten billion francs even unaccounted for the recent I mean the previous loans that were granted to the government of Cameroon we are told that ten billion is missing between the Ministry of Finance and that of Public Health and IMF is adding another money. 
they, so they are I saying th- that. I think this organization we are saying it was like uh, pressurizing the government, these people not to be given loan to Cameroon because the, more, the money are poorly managed. So we are praying that because we wanted to use this issue too as an as a strong weapon or way to pressurize the Cameroon government to to like call on a, call for a peaceful dialogue because all these things were like what Madame Kawala and others were doing was centered on this issue of dialogue between the different stakeholders on the current current crisis that is going on. Cameroon, they knew very well that the IF suspend Cameroon, suspend um, for, from Cameroon. Or suspend, stop giving funds, this funds to Cameroon. It would definitely, like one way or the other, pressurize the Cameroon government to call the other parties to, to, to the dialogue table so that they can sort a solution out of the current. Does it the mean that the, the allegations of some of your peers, the, the rights uh, group, they were not uh, founded? The allegations against the government of Cameroon that the money is being mismanaged? No, but we are. No, we are I'm, not, I'm not a member of the Cameroon judiciary. So the Cameroon, member of the Cameroon judiciary that has to like. Uh, Investigate all what happened and bring bring the, no, those who are the suspected bench, of having this. The only bench of the Supreme Court came out with their report. The, the only bench came out with, with, with their report. I initially said here last time that the only bench of the Supreme Court is not a is not the court. It's a court that has a final say after after judging a matter. And if the court pass a judgment, which would be the one that is binding, so they, they are seeing the the only bench is seeing the the preliminary process to to investigate on what exactly what happened. Ok, état plus canté. D'accord. Euh, si on peut d'engranger de, le pas sur euh, la télécommunication, euh, le journal La République qui titre à sa grande une le mine postel en cimetière de projet. Comment analysez-vous euh, cette information Comment comprendre que le mine postel est un, est, peut être assimilé comme, euh, comme un cimetière de, de, de projet You know, you know like everything is possible in Cameroon now. We have been seeing every, all types of things here in Cameroon. So we don't exactly know. Who, for the, people are seeing some of their duties or some of their functions. People are not like, they don't know exactly what they are supposed to do and what they are not supposed to do. So in Cameroon here, uh, it's, it's, sometimes you see a minister who is like walking, so going above his, uh, walking, uh, maybe what I think is against or above the level that you're supposed to walk. So and, uh, I don't know if the, the, the things are not, they are not well organized or whatsoever. But, uh, and, and this is even coming at a time when the uh, Minister of uh, Post and Telecommunications, uh, Madame Libon King, is being accused by Nextel uh, Telecommunication Company of lies telling. We saw the Minister at uh, just ended June session of Parliament uh, accusing Nextel of being a bad company. Yes, I, but it's just a mere accusation now. Where, I think they have the accusing next day. Next day has, has the right uh, to take the matter to court. So as to, to see and that this is not no the light first is time on the issue. things like that. So, sometimes that this one is that that, to that, play, to play their loan, games. A loan telecommunication company, a, the pride of Cameroon, a national company, a company that a Cameroonian owns. And instead of protecting the company, we are giving a bad name to the company. That's the what I was saying. That if, 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 even if they have a problem with Nestle, they should look for a peaceful or uh, amicable ways of solving, setting the problems out, not to come out to make a uh, type of allegation. But if it's an, if an Excel thing that is an allegation, then the next day file, file a court suit to see how, how more light being thrown on the matter. So that like, Cameroon will be aware whether what the, um, the Minister of Communication is saying, the Minister of Opposition and Telecommunication is saying, or it is false. Okay, uh, we continue uh, with the uh, Info newspaper once again, like I did mention, we continue with Info newspaper to talk about this other uh, pertinent issue that has to do with uh, uh, a moment, that has to do with, I mean, Teno, Teno is a Cameroonian artist who was reportedly arrested by security officers, uh, officers in Douala after he was involved in an accident that claimed the life of a 19-year-old uh, girl from the west region of the country, Erika, and uh, Tegno is currently awaiting trial at the New Best Centre prison as we learn. What is your take on this, uh, the whole issue of Tegno? There are other sources that are reporting that he attempted escaping from a hospital where he was receiving treatment. The issue is that for now, I don't know exactly what happened, but the, the, the thing remains that Techno has been arrested, so we don't know. It's, we said it was an accident, as normally people are claiming. I don't see any reason why Techno should be arrested. What does, does the law say? what does the law say? If you're involved in an accident, probably you drive your car into a crowd or you have an accident and somebody dies in your car, are you liable to such uh, incidents? When you, something has happened, you, the first, first, first of all, carry out investigation to know if you, you did what so you did was intentional or was not intentional. But with the case of Techno, when you see Techno being arrested, that means there's something fishy about it. That means that the people are not like convinced that what Techno, what the, the allegation that they, 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 it was an accident, it was a fire accident. So no, we have because so, maybe pre so preliminary investigation and other sources from what we are reading in the papers shows that Techno was drunk and uh, uh, he insisted to be on the wheel, that he wanted to drive the car himself. The driver, his driver refused, and other his manager and other guys who were in the in the car they refused. But Techno insisted and took 
over the, the steering wheel. Yeah, that's where there's a problem. Because normally, if you take on, uh, if, if you some, if you are drunk and you are driving, that means that maybe indirectly you already have the consent. In fact, or you are, you, what you are whatever you are doing, you, you are supposed to be liable to it because you, normally some, you are not supposed to drink, uh, to to get drunk and drive or to drink and drive to take anything that will like upset your mind and drive because no, you will not be on your right senses. But that's what we, that's why I asked you in the in the beginning of yeah. uh, the technology. I asked you if you have an accident mm -hmm. and somebody dies in your car, mm -hmm. are you liable to such incident? I will insist that everything is still under investigation. But the, the issue is that if you have an accident and uh, like what happened, you have an accident and somebody dies in your car, the first thing I've, that is done is investigation. Is investigation, investigation is currently going on, and the, uh, the judiciary of the member of the judiciary are carrying out the investigation. Look, look, look deep into the matter and tell us, Cameroon, what is exactly happened on this issue. So we can, I'm not like uh, taking side to say that maybe the technology will be liable or it is not liable. But I think it is the judiciary, the, the investigators who carry, who are carrying out the investigation on this matter that will throw more light on this thing and tell us exactly whether they know how they handle and whatever happened or, or not. So all these things are what we are having now. There are still allegations. So in each and every one of them has uh, the right to to to, to presumption, presumption. They know has the right to presumption of innocence like any other Cameroonian. So he's still presumed innocent or whatsoever you know, accusation that is leveled against him until proven otherwise by the competent tribunal. Okay, I tap it barely one minute. Eh, D'accord. Uh, parlons exactement aussi hein, de cette information qui nous euh, renseigne sur euh, la succession à la municipalité de Banganté mm -hmm. après Niat, c'est Niat. So what I was I have to say here is that so even those like we Niat after Niat is still Niat. So Niat is uh, the son of uh, Mr. Niat Nifenji. He's a Cameroonian like any other Cameroonian. So I don't see why we should make it. You know, if actually he was voted to that effect, then I think there's no problem because every each and every Cameroonian, whether you're the son of Prime Minister or the son of President, or who, so you have the but, right but, to, but, to, but, to but, a political to, position like any other Cameroonian. I have the impression like other Cameroonians that the, the headline is misleading because uh, the person who who was at the helm of that uh, municipality before uh, Nyat's son was not any member of the NIAD, uh, if, uh, if I got my no. facts correctly, uh, okay. we had Selecing uh, Kecha Kutes who was there. He, she left when she was appointed as a Minister of, uh, of Urban Development and Housing. I, th I think that most of Cameroon are referring to the fact that because the, the, the father is the president of Sine, so that no, I think that it's the mm. <laughs> no, no, That's, no, 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 that's no. my own okay. to it, so I don't know, okay. because I don't know if there was an, an, uh, another NIAD there before, before this other NIAD. So I think that there would be uh, issue that but the, the father... But does it mean that if I'm a son of an influential person in the mm -hmm. country, and I'm qualified. Can't I handle the post? I mean, well, this is clear. coming to add to other, I mean, other talks that we've been having, like uh, Frank Bia taking over power from his father. Does it mean that people, when once your father is influential, according to Cameroonians, you cannot? handle another or may take over a public office when, you, when know, you are confident and there are conditions for eligibility of to be to be, to be a member of any whether an association or to, to, be, to be a candidate in the, in the president and all the rest so if you are eligible if you are, if you are if you have if you have fulfilled all the eligibility conditions you as a Cameroonian you have the right whether you are son of the minister son of the president whosoever or every Cameroonian has the right to any political position whether political, political or whatsoever position you have there we have the right whether so we don't I don't see any reason why people should be going around saying that this other person if in, in so far as the person is voted Democratically, so I don't see that if there is any, there is any problem on that. So the one thing is that we should the place to be voted. He should not be imposed on that place, but he should be voted by the by the people whom he, he or she is representing. So any Cameroonian has the right, as they say, to any political or civil and uh, administrative position. Okay, thank you so much for coming, Amadou Tante. It was a pleasure having you on today's edition of the program. Okay, thank you once more. Thank you to televiewers for watching. Uh, the program, of course, was produced by Tebon Christian for presentation. We've been uh, a tape container myself, Lasha Kinsley. See you tomorrow for yet another edition of what the papers must have said. Bye-bye. Prime TV, the African Eye.